Hey everybody, another problem similar to a Carnegie uh, Mellon informatics, I think, math competition problem back in 2018. Now I've altered a little bit of the instructions. I think the problem writer said that he wanted X to be greater than one, but I, I lifted that. We can, we can conclude that X is greater than zero just because the sum of two positive numbers have to be another positive number. There's no way you can have a, a minus sign working in here. Uh, I don't think, but, and also y'all, there are two values of X here, cause this would be a quadratic, All right? So both, uh, I think both of them have to be positive just by what's given, okay? But anyway, you can think of this as a quadratic if you multiply through by X and there's two positive solutions, I believe. Although I may be kind of stretching a little bit there. Now we're supposed to evaluate X squared minus one over X squared. Okay, given this information, and we're looking for a real value to x here. Okay, so it's not surprising that this identity here, if you want to call it that, uh, we're looking for x squared minus 1 over x squared. So that's going to pop out of this expression here in some form, uh, x plus 1 over x quantity squared minus uh, x minus 1 over x quantity squared. Now, notice right here, this 2 is a kind of a break for us because that, that's kind of a magical constant that just pops out of the algebra. It's a result that when you expand this guy out, you end up with x, or excuse me, two times x times one over x, okay? That's where this two, it seems like a miracle, sort of, unless you've seen this expression many times. But when you expand this out, you have x times one over x happening twice. Well, x times one over x is one, provided x is not equal to zero, and it's not, because zero wouldn't be a solution to this, right? Okay, in a similar fashion, you get minus 2 right here. So everything cancels in this whole expansion right here. This whole expression is just equal to the constant 4. Okay, now that, that, that's uh, pretty fortunate because what I do is I just replace x plus 1x. x plus the reciprocal of x is equal to root 45. So that's where this came from, okay? Then we have minus this, and you see then it's just equal to 4. All of this stuff goes away. We don't need any more. We have transitivity of equality right here. And, of course, this statement right here implies this. Now, I left out just a little bit of work, but if you take this to the other, to this side, let's say, and then subtract 4 from 45, you get the 41 you see right here. Now, notice right here, you can take the plus and minus square roots. So you would get right here uh, x minus 1 over x. is equal to plus or minus of the square root of 41, okay? Okay, so let's go down. Here's our original problem. So we know what x plus one over x is. Again, it's given is to be the square root of 45. And so what we get right here is that this is equal to the square root of 45 Okay, times, and let me put this in parentheses, plus or minus. And that seems a little weird, but there's two solutions to, to this right here, folks, at the very, very beginning. If x plus 1 over x is equal to the square root of 45, if you take a look at this graph, it, it's symmetric about the origin. It's not 1 to 1. And so you end up with two solutions to this. And so what we have here is two solutions to this, I think, unless I'm making a mistake. And you guys, please sure let me know. But I think, I think it's correct. So uh, anyway, this comes out, turns out to be uh, plus or minus the square root of, uh, y'all, I'm going to try to simplify this. Let's see, uh, 45, 9 times 5 is 45, so we can take the 3 out. And so you're going to have a 3 here in front, okay? Again, 9 times uh 5 is 45, and so then you have 5 times 41, which I believe is 205. So we have plus or minus 3 times the square root of 205. Okay, and that's our answer. There's two answers to this. Now, again, I think it's correct. I have a kind of a weird sinking feeling about this problem, but I, I think it's right. It's plus or minus 3 times the square root of 205. Okay, and again, um, I might not have, this reduces to a quadratic. It may not be clear. 
Maybe you can have a plus. No, this is, X has to be positive, right? You can't have a negative X. I don't know what I was thinking. So X definitely has to be positive. And if you multiply through by X, you see you get a quadratic right here. You would get uh, X squared uh, minus root 45. X, and already you don't like that. That's not particularly nice in terms of trying to manage with a quadratic formula. It's not awful, but you know. But so you got X here. Let's see what else is going on. And then just plus one equals to zero, I believe, right? Now this has a positive discriminant, right? So that means we're gonna have uh, two real solutions, but we know that both real solutions are positive just by the form of this original expression. Did I do this right? X. Uh, yeah, you bring this to the other side. Yeah, right. So this quadratic has two solutions. They're both positive, but it's kind of a pain to do that and substitute back into here. This is easier, in my humble opinion, because of this algebra here that just craps out into a constant. Okay, so that's that's where the algebra at the beginning is is computationally more efficient than trying to take the solutions of this and substituting here. Maybe I'm wrong about that, but I, I, in my opinion, it's slightly easier. And that's, I believe the problem composer felt the same way. David Al Altizio, I think. But so anyway, uh, that's it, ladies and gentlemen. Plus or minus three root 205.